Welcome to Tales from the Streets. This is what our narrator has to say. The story I read last week about the Catholic man and his sick wife has given me courage to talk about my own situation. Please listen and help. I am not Catholic. Far from it. I am a Muslim. I buried my wife seven months ago. She died of breast cancer. And I want to remarry. Guess who? Her best friend. Yes, yes. That is my own dilemma. I met my wife Aminat through her best friend Toy Bat. Toy, as we call her, is a childhood friend of sorts because we grew up on the same street, but there was no relationship between us until we met at the Polytechnic. She was studying MassCom while I was studying Biz at me. You know how it is you meet in a foreign place and you bond with people you are familiar with from home. Yeah, that's how we bonded. We just began to talk once we found ourselves among strangers, and soon we became like brother and sister. It was on one of those visits to Toy's place, off campus, one of those half-completed buildings rented out to students in town, that I met Aminat. Aminat and Toy were best friends. Aminat and I became an item almost immediately. We courted throughout school, and I made a promise to marry her. We did our nikai the moment I got a job after NYC, and our marriage was blessed with two lovely children, Samira and Nadia, six and three years old. Sometime last year, my wife began to complain of pain in her breast, and after several tests, several diagnoses, it was found to be breast cancer, stage three. Chemo, drugs, radiotherapy. My wife went through it all. She was hospitalized for a while, and that was when she called for Toyi to come to our rescue, especially with, with the kids, since I was mostly with her at the hospital. It was a lasso. And you know, a relative has to be with the patient so that they can run errands for them, buy injections or drip or medicines that the doctors need, or even buy food or get them to take a bath. Or, you know the arrangement at general hospitals now. After every four days, Toya and I would swap. She would stay at the hospital while I took care of the children. And once they were off to school, I would quickly rush to my shop at Shomolu where I run a printing press. I always turned up because if I didn't show my face, my boys would rip me off and steal me blind. And you know, this kind of sickness my wife had requires constant money, serious money. So I was juggling office and hospital, office and hospital. And again, let me say this, Toyu was my wife's idea. She didn't want people to know the kind of disease worrying her. I may not believe that someone in her family was behind it. She told me she had a dream, that one of them gave her food in her dream. And after that, she found herself to have cancer of the breast. Don't ask me whether I believe it or not. That is what my wife told me. And if she believed it, I have no reason to doubt her. She didn't want too many people knowing she was sick like that. And because she was always in pain, severe pains, and she was very sick, that no amount of injections could, could help her surge. I mean, that's what I do. So I respected her wish, and I kept mom for a while. So I think she didn't want people to know, or she didn't want people to see, see her in that state. Anyway, as I was saying, Toy came to our rescue, you know. She had seen some disappointment in life herself. There was this guy she met after we all finished school. He graduated from UI. I think, and they met at one of those uh, family weddings. I don't know much about him. I just know the guy had promised to marry Toy, but he wanted to go and do a master's program in one of those Eastern European countries. Not the UK. I think Sweden or Poland or was it even Canada? 
See, I don't know. Anyway, he went abroad. He finished his program and married an Oyibo woman. So, of course, Toyo was in a bad shape for some time, and it was my wife who helped stabilize her. But Toyo is a smart woman. She began to do small, small trade, and, and she prospered, and she began to take care of herself and her parents. Small time, she had a small boutique, and business was doing well. When Aminat called, Toyo left everything to come to us. After a while, I had to tell a few of our family members because, I swear, as a man, I had to prepare myself for the worst. I told myself, though she said I shouldn't tell anyone, but God forbid she, does, she suddenly dies, what soap will I use to wash myself clean of her death? I told her parents, I told her siblings and mine, and thank God I did. Three months later, my wife died after surgery, which they said was successful. She was a massive pain. Sorry, I'm getting emotional. Everyone saw how Toyi was such a help to my wife. Everyone thanked her and prayed for her because my wife was always telling them to thank her for us. I was devastated after Amina passed on. I took my children to my wife's people for some time because I just couldn't cope. Toyi was still coming around. She would bring food once in a while, then help tidy the house. And I'm usually not an untidy person, but I just didn't want to do anything after Amina's death. Maybe that was my way of coping. I didn't want to get up from bed or eat or leave. I was just not in the mood for anything. Plus, I suddenly realized I had been, it had been such an exhausting job caring for my wife during her period of sickness. Then one day, the devil got up to drink water. <laughs> what do I mean? Toyi had come to the house to help me clean up yet again. And watching her, I just realized my life would be completely different from what I had planned with Aminat. That was when I finally burst into tears. All this while, almost four months after my wife died, I hadn't shed a tear. I was too exhausted. That day, it was as if my heart would break. I was crying like a small boy. Toyi came to the parlor and tried to comfort me. Why was I crying? I mean, I had seen Amina's death from far, even long before she died, and I, was, I wasn't even prepared for it. I didn't know what happened after that. I think we men interpret these things differently. But as she comforted me, all I wanted to do was have sex with this woman. I held this woman and began to undress her. She was surprised and was fighting me, but I held her. I begged her. I was still crying low. This is madness, Abby. I made love to Toyi. I didn't plan it. I didn't see her as Toyi at that time. I just had a need. An urge that I wanted to satisfy. That is what happened. After we made love, we both slept, woke up again, and did it again. You want a true confession? Well, that's what happened. See, I don't know about love or not. I know I like this woman a lot. I know my wife was safe with her. I know my children are safe with her. I know she sacrificed for me and my late wife. I know I want to make her happy. That's what I know. Yes, yes, we also met a few times more since then. So when she came to me that she is pregnant for, for me, just two months ago, I had to man up and take responsibility. Toy is 36 years. Will I ask her to go and abort it? My own child? No. She is afraid of what people will say. She thinks they will say we conspired to kill my wife. I will not stop people from talking, but I will not send her packing either. She has refused to move in with me. No problem about that for now. I'll make arrangements for our Nikai. Islam doesn't say I can't remarry. It's just that the circumstances now would make it look somehow. But I'll take responsibility and I will marry her. If you enjoyed the story, please like, share, 
and subscribe. Thank you.